most worshipful Grandmaster, right worshipful brothers, past Grandmasters, worshipful brothers and brethren all, greetings. My name is David Zahedi, Grand Orator of the Grand Lodge of Arizona for 2020-2021. This is the third installment of a personal reflection upon the three principal tenets of Freemasonry, and I thank you for this opportunity to share further with you. I've shared my thoughts on brotherly love and relief. Brotherly love may be seen as the influence and beauty of Freemasonry. Relief as the action and strength of Freemasonry. Truth, we are taught, is the foundation. In our ritual, we discuss truth as that being of a divine character and the root of all virtues. We may call to mind the ancients and their reverence to Fides, just as much as we may admonish each other to employ candor in all judgments. The mention of truth and its actions are legion in the teachings of our gentle craft. But what is our relationship with truth? How does it guide us in our daily lives, in our interactions with our brethren and family, in our work? Yes, truth is the foundation of virtue, but it may also be seen as the cornerstone of relationship. For by its employment are not the concepts of deception and insincerity vacant in our actions, while being ever present when not employed. Thus, truth reflects the wisdom of Freemasonry. Yet, truth is a difficult concept to define and many tomes of philosophy have been written and consumed, chasing the rabbit down the hole in attempts to better understand this grand idea. In many ways, truth is a personal reflection, a personal experience that cannot be conveyed to another in a manner clearly to help one understand what truth may mean to you. It must be experienced. Let us consider in this conversation two truths, lowercase t's, exist that are seeds of truth, uppercase t. Let this be our agreeable criterion. The first is a tangible, absolute truth. For example, I am or am not delivering this oration. I am, so this is an expression of tangible truth. I do acknowledge there exist arguments to the contrary, but for the sake of today's story, let us, examine, let us not examine those schools of thought and just accept this as a truth. The second is a relative truth, something that gains greater or only has meaning based upon our relationship with it. An example may be seen in the myriad of Masonic secrets today available on the internet and in books. Yes, their meaning may be read and possibly learned. However, without the experience of initiation, their profound meaning will never ring true. It is our relationship with experience that allows wisdom, which is truth, to grow. The relationship developed in Freemasonry is not only about what I experience, but what I experience and feel in relation to you. So that there may be a bridge built between an us, so that in this journey of life, there is a we, for we, in Freemasonry, being traveling men towards that descriptive country, the great bard so well defined, we are in relationship together. Now I again ask for your allowance and request you cease thinking of the three principal tenets as nouns, but allow yourself to consider them as verbs. Is it not so that one of the initial teachings we receive in Masonry is to act with goodness and practice truth. To practice truth is to be true in all our actions. In my beginning years of Masonry, one of my great joys, and remains so today, is traveling to visit different lodges and shaking the hands of new and old brothers and friends. Today the handshaking is a bit limited, but the joy of seeing each other is not diminished. One of my greatest experiences was traveling with most worshipful brother Boyd Robertson. We were both members of a research lodge that traveled to different lodges throughout northern Arizona for our meetings. During our drives, 
He'd tell me stories of lessons learned in masonry. One of his lessons was that when you go somewhere different from your home lodge, it is important to sit with someone new, someone you don't know, thereby providing frequent opportunity to meet a new brother and form a new relationship. One of his most important lessons taught me as a mason was how to order my life. He shared that a Mason's life should be ordered as followed. God, family, work, then Masonry. I took this lesson to heart and endeavored to regulate all my decisions in Freemasonry in accordance with this concept. The ordering of life was good instruction and reflection. But if we look deeper and contemplate on truth, we see that a symbiotic relationship exists between the elements of our lives and masonry. Not a hierarchical defining, but seeds of each within each. This relationship provides an opportunity to practice masonry in every act, in every expression of worship, of work, of engagement with one another. Masonry may be witnessed. As truth may be the wisdom of masonry, it provides us this opportunity to demonstrate masonry in every expression of ourselves. Here is the great truth of masonry. We learn to see the divine in every action, in every moment, in every thing. Truth expressed in our daily lives is reflected in our relationship with the great architect of the universe, reflecting out for all the world to witness our expression of masonry in our daily lives. In my travels, I found truth in masonry. And the truth is that we, the frail creatures of creation, are human. And we falter at times. We witness those cracks today getting bigger in societal communication. But through the application of our Masonic implements, are we not striving towards improvement? which implies that we are yet there. And the truth, brothers, is that is okay. We are human. Sometimes we are weak, and other times we are strong. But so long as we strive to regulate our own selves by the principles taught in masonry, we know the truth in our foundation. We have faith that we are not alone, that we have a brother, an extended family available to help raise us up when fallen, recalling our names in their prayers, in whom I may confide. A Masonic truth may be seen as the great architect of the universe is the essence within, within all things, all people, and all beliefs, and the reason for which all men who express belief in the divine are welcomed in the craft. This is why the Creator is the true foundation of Freemasonry and that from which the true beauty and strength of the craft emanates, allowing the wisdom of the divine to be witnessed in every act of masonry, and the center point from which all else may be experienced. I close today with a quote from the Zohar, a passage yearning for response, seeking the sons of light to manifest their fidelity. You beings on earth who are in deep slumber, awaken. Who among you has labored to turn darkness into light and bitterness into sweetness? Thank you again, my brothers, and may our tenants be ever-present in your life.